is up my friends how y'all doing the weather is awesome i was trying to get this done this morning but work got in the way but it's like five now and it is just beautiful outside even when the sun's here i think there's a cloud over it right now but when the sun's come back it's really comfortable in front probably won't be sweating a river in this video one really cool thing also you see it already she's home the z is back home man Oof, i missed that car i did so much in the last vlog remember the last vlog that I did a bunch of small things, small changes to it. She was good. Everybody loved her up in New York, but she's finally back home. But today's topic. What we're going to do today is we're going to take care of a coolant time bomb. There is a time bomb on the 35 and the 37 engine. I believe, I don't think the D has it. Someone in the comments, correct me. But I believe it's just the HR, VHR type engines. I don't believe the DE has this time bomb, ticking time bomb. Time and time and again, you would see on Facebook groups or sometimes in a forum or even in Instagram, people post pictures of this time bomb going off. You guys are saying, okay, okay, quit yapping what the time bomb is. I'm talking about this guy back here. focus that guy down inside there what that is is a super annoying who knows why the hell they made it radiator coupler it is a piece of plastic that connects two radiator hose not the direct radiator holders but coolant lines okay it connects two coolant lines together and over time the heat cycling and stuff like that it gets brittle and it just falls apart i mean i've seen some people driving and just spraying everywhere i was lucky but i was looking for it the reason why i said i was lucky but i was looking for it is because i bought a replacement many many moons ago motordyne clamp replacement i had this and this from z1 a long time now and I'm supposed to change it out but I just never did I was pretty much playing Russian roulette with my time bomb fortunately it didn't explode in my face all I got was a little crack and some seepage and stuff like that I've seen these things totally fail like totally crumble snap in half come apart and just water everywhere so I got really lucky but don't be like me guys don't wait let's go ahead and take care of this Man, so famous last words. Whew. I said it was gonna be easy. What a pain in the butt. First of all, you'll see I have a little timeline. And those extended plies, it's really hard to get some good torque on there. Eventually I was able to get it out. But then it started falling apart on me. <coughs> Take a look at this. Look at how it came out. You'll see in the Time lapse. How I look at this. Look how brittle this is. Just falling right apart. See, I got lucky. I got real lucky. Instead of it just totally disintegrating and blowing apart on me, it just had a small crack, and I was able to catch it early enough, and then. It kind of came apart while I was taking it out. I used the pliers to kind of push the tube out to try and push it fitting out, but that kind of broke it up. So I kind of held, held the hose at an angle and shook it all out. So now let's go ahead and get this Z1 adapter in place. Thankfully, we don't have to mess with those hard clamps anymore. We use these hose clamps. I'm not a big fan of these hose clamps, but way better preferred than taking out those clamps. Ooh. 
and there she is. I already went ahead and took a flathead screwdriver and opened the bleeder valve in preparation for when we fill the radiator fluid up and it got a bleeder system and stuff like that. I'll have to keep it on it when I'm filling the, the, the radiator water, the radiator coolant because it will start bubbling out. When it starts bubbling out, I'll go in and close that valve out and let the funnel bleeder system work. It makes it works quicker, you know? Time for the bonus content. We are going to perform a throttle body bypass, coolant bypass. On your car's throttle body, they run coolant through it. Normally for very colder climates, but here in the south, Tennessee, and further down and stuff like that, there's not really an issue with the throttle bodies locking up and stuff like that. So you see coolant enters through this side, goes through the throttle body and exit. In terms, it keeps the throttle body warm during winter time, so the butterfly or anything like that won't lock up. But in the summer or the warmer climate, it actually heats the throttle body, so it kind of heats the air coming in. So what we're going to do, went and got some 5 16th barb fittings, from Lowe's. Since I'm going ahead and having to replace the back one while I'm already introducing air into the system, this is the perfect opportunity to bypass the throttle body on the coolant loop. There is, however, a process of deleting all these lines. You delete a very rare cool coolant line, all the throttle body lines, and what I like to call the spider, which is behind the manifolds. Mike Upton makes a little simple kit to help reroute and keep the radiator coolant flowing at appropriate, keep the loop going appropriately. But we're just gonna do a single bypass for now. If you wanna go ahead and go over the coolant, throttle body coolant delete and manifold delete, hit that like, put a message in the description saying that you wanna see that whole coolant system delete. Now let's go ahead and work on bypassing those throttle bodies. Okay, so we flip in the script a little bit. When I took apart two nipples and I put them together, there was extra hose, a bunch of extra hose, and it was kind of kinked, and I was worried about the flow. So when I kept looking at it, I realized, see this one here? This one here was going into this nipple, and then there was a hose from here down into this nipple, and that was the loop. It was going around coming down there. So instead of having all the tubing big and kinked and stuff, I just got rid of this line here and connected this line directly into here. Same thing on this side. You can see I already taken them out. I pulled them out because I realized I could do the same thing on this side. So this long line coming about, I'm going to delete this short line here, and then connect the longer line into here, which will complete the loop. So once again, this long line coming around, okay, this is where it joins going into the throttle body. We're deleting this one, that's going into this metal piece here, and we're just gonna connect it directly. Which, oddly enough, some of those runs, some of those parts you're deleting, is part of deleting the entire tubing system I mentioned earlier in the video, with the spider, with the spider in the back and stuff like that with the, mark, the mic up done, ooh, out of breath. The Upton cable um, hoses and stuff. So we're kind of there. I should finish it, but losing daylight. So we're just gonna do the small delete. Back to work. So who would've thunk it? I didn't really need any barbs. All, I probably didn't even need any hose clamps because I could use a factory hose clamps. Although some of them do tend to leak a little bit. Pretty much just two hose clamps, delete two hoses, reroute the lines. That was actually pretty simple. I wonder if anybody else done this before. I guess if I did some research, I'd know that beforehand, huh? Well, you guys know now. Hit that like if that helped you out. So here, the two lines. Here is, I'll leave a description in the kit, a rubber um, vacuum cap assortment. Cause you know insects. Insects get in everywhere. So you see, I've, I capped off the cool lines going to trial body. That line go there. All those lines mess there. Big loop back to here. Right, so that's pretty awesome. What I need to do now, pack up the tools, get that filler kit ready, put some cool in this bad boy, lead the back, lead the front, and we're done. Now guys, I knew this car hasn't ran in a few days. I knew it was cool. 
no issues, okay? Please be careful, do not ever open a radio cap of a hot engine. Always squeeze the, the, the tube. If the tube is compressed easily, there's no pressure in the system, you're safe to open it. Please be careful, do not run the car, open your cover. I got the medium cap with the medium fit in and the container. Well, that's actually fit really nice in there. I have some ready opened. Ooh, it's almost a full jug. I bought a second jug. I bought a second jug just in case. I didn't know if I'd leak any, but apparently I've already dripped and leaked out what should have dripped and leaked out. So let's go ahead and fill this up. Coming out from the system. Oh, we got some leaking in the back. I gotta close that off. Ah! I put the screwdriver away. So, this is good. We know this bleeder works good. Sorry, it wasn't in frame. Bad. But that was good. Remember previously I opened that bleeder valve there? So we know all the air should have come out that going into the box. So that's pretty good. We did lose a little bit of coolant, but hey, I got a bunch of extra and a full container. I don't believe I see any of the coolant leaks. Let's go ahead and start the car up and watch it. Give it a little more. So we got the car running, we started it up. We're looking for a little bit of leaks. We also turned the heater on at max because we want that to run through the system. We want the whole coolant loop to be activated want to get all that air moving around because we want to see air coming out of the container bubbling up. We want it to get up to operating temperature and we want that thermostat to open and open that loop and cycle the water, cycle all the air out and stuff like that. So that's what we're doing right now, waiting for operating temperature, waiting for that cycle to come through. So we got the air in full, full blast, full heat, 90 degrees. The temperature needle is moving up. We just gotta wait a little while longer. Oh, I think I saw some bubbles coming up. There you go. So that's awesome, that's a good sign. That means the thermostat is opening and the radiator fluid is circulating within the system and the air is getting purged out. So that's awesome. Let me put the camera down, poke around with a, with a light and look for some leaks. I'm still waiting for it to come to totally up to temperature. The fan hasn't kicked on yet. Hoping when the fan kicks on, that's a good indication of the fluid is circling through the system and it has to cool itself down. So far it's looking good, no leaks. It's, it's, the engine's getting hot, the car's getting hot. I continue to see bubbles coming up, so that's super awesome. So I'm normally at where I am standing still with the car. Operating temperature right there. Still waiting. Still waiting for the fans to kick on.
I thought it was over. I thought they had all the air onto the system, so I was ready to put the plugger, the plugger, the plug in there, take the funnel out, and put it back into the container. But then I was like, let me just rev the car. I revved the car up, and lo and behold, it actually forced some air out to the system and back into the funnel. I'm gonna repeat that again. Give it some accelerator pedal. See if you guys can see it. It kind of bubbled up a little bit, and then some more air came out, which is awesome. Okay, so seeing. Seeing some air coming out? You get some pressure, but every now and then some air is coming out. Let me get the flashlight again and look for leaks. So I still need to clean up, but we're losing daylight. I don't have any studio studio lights or anything like that, so I decided let's go ahead and just wrap this up. Super easy change. It was a little tricky getting the back coupler off, the actual couplers itself, but you saw how it made it easier to get those broken pieces out, squeeze from the back and move it forward, kind of hold the mount open down and kind of shake it out, pull it out. So no, no debris goes back into the system. You don't want that to happen. Did that on the two sides, so super awesome there. The delete was cool. Instead of using the barb fittings, we just moved the hoses. I would say probably get some hose clamps or you could use the spring clamps that are factory. Some of them do tend to leak, so that's your choice. You can figure out which one you want. The fill kit, the fill bucket fill kit, super easy holy moly that made that radiator job super easy not scary at all sometimes you're always worrying how am i going to bleed the system properly that was drop dead easy i'm going to put a link in the description if i forget please remind me link in the description for that filter kit that i bought also for the rubber bungs rubber vacuum hose caps yeah in the description I'm happy I did that. Temperature stays well. I'm going to clean up now, take the car for a drive, and if I have any issues, I'll put it in editing or come back and say something. But if this was super helpful to you guys, what would be helpful to me is if you smash that subscribe, hit that like, guys. Let's get this algorithm working for us. I want this channel to grow with you all. I hope you all could join me on this journey of getting this channel bigger. So let's go ahead and just work it, work the system, get the algorithm working in our favor and hopefully let's make this channel blow up until next time guys i do appreciate your support love you guys bye